Hey, how's it going? Today, I wanted to go over and review custom primitive data and using it in Unreal Engine. For this first part of the video, I'm just going to go really quickly how to use it if you just want to learn the basics and then you can be done. And then later, I'm going to be uh, showing a couple ways to use it rather than just plugging it in. OK, so first things first, I made a material. We made a material parameter. And once you have a parameter, you get this new custom primitive data option. And I went and selected use custom primitive data on that. Underneath is a button that says primitive data index. And you'll need that later if you have more than one of these in a uh, material. But for now, there you go. One is set. All right. So I'm just going to find something and uh, assign the material. Um, the rest of this is from my virtual texture project that I released. Okay, there you go. It's done. You'll notice it's black. And that's because the custom primitive data as of right now, will just default to zero. Um, so once we have that, I'm going to scroll through, I'm going to fail to find it. So we're just going to search up uh, custom inside the details panel, right? Um, from there, we're just gonna we're now going to be able to enable options that say, hey, set this custom uh, value to whatever I tell you, right? And using that, you can set something like something on your material within the actual instance of your mesh itself, rather than having to rely on a material instance or a dynamic material within blueprints. Okay, and now this is where that index comes in handy. Thankfully, we only have one, so we need zero. And there you go, it's set. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to cover using the same exact thing, but we're going to use color. OK, so that's where we're going now. It's the same exact thing. It's that easy. It's like anything else with materials. When you break it down to it, they're all just a vector that we got to figure out, right? They're all scalars. That's just colors combined. So it's a little different in that color obviously has R, G, B and A. So when we enable it, we're going to change that index to be one. Uh, but we then have to know in our minds when we're doing anything with this material that it takes up those four slots. So if you use a color or vector three, which is how we'll set it later, um, we need to know that we need to set red, green, blue. OK, and it's that simple. Uh, if you want to learn more about the memory savings and the fact that this can save you material instances and all of that um, and the fact that it can help with draw calls depending on how you're doing meshes and things like that in the world then uh, I will link the documentation down below and I hope it helps anyone that needs it um, and as you can see we're now setting the I forgot oh yeah zeros a missive um, but you can now see we can set the uh, one, two or three data and that will fill out the RGB channels. Now, we could use this for more advanced than just setting the color. We could have it where, say, a uh, material is making something rotate. We could set a scalar parameter to rotate it faster or slower based on the custom data primitive or anything like that. Uh, anyways. That is just setting up a color if that's what you want to do and how to handle vectors that are more than one or param custom data parameters that are more than one index. So if we added another, we would skip four for this one right here. OK, and now I wanted to get into making a blueprint to be able to control the colors. It'd be easy. Nice little thing for you guys. Um, hopefully we haven't been too rushed. Uh, I've been trying to improve making videos and such like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, this project I already made available to patrons on Patreon. So if you want to just use that as an example, feel free. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but anyways, with that blueprint, let's get back to it. Uh, I just added a sphere and now we're in the construction script. And now all I'm searching is literally set custom uh, primitive data. And we can set uh, two scale, like it has all the options we would need. We can just set a scalar or um, more data, right? Say we need a two vector or a three or a four. 
it has those options, thankfully. Uh, if you are using instant static meshes or HISM, then there's two options for that that I don't cover in this video because the engine was crashing on me when I was trying to set them up. But anyways, there you go. It's that easy. Bam. From here, uh, we could set that uh, single uh, scalar, right? It's that easy. Um, and you just want to remember what kind of... You know, if you had a vector two or vector three, whatever. And that's how you would base what you're going to be making. But now we have that color. So the color, we're going to need to get a get primitive uh, vector three. OK, or get custom primitive, I should say, custom primitive data. Uh, and then we're going to need to remember to set that data index. OK, um, because that's what's going to tell it, hey, which four or three are we going to use on this right um and this is where it's easy piped in there to get a linear color to vector three and that's how we're going to set it up and i'm just going to make this a parameter so that we can set it on the blueprint in the world and that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video i know it's always a little rushed i apologize if you have any questions feel free to ask them below uh if you want more stuff like this feel check out my patreon or twitch page to support me and uh uh subscribe i think that's what we ask for on youtube i don't know i'm still new to this we'll see who knows <laughs> um anyways uh thanks for you know exploring unreal with me today and look at this we got a cube that we can just change colors with now and we don't even need to worry about making it a custom material we don't need to make a new material instance we can just have per mesh colors and we're good all right see you next time